Hi, this is Justin G0KSC of the G0KSC website and Innov Antennas. Tonight we're going to be looking at the 4NEC2 modeling software. Where to get it, how to install, and then also a, a basic look over the simple functions on that software. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is open up a browser and search for the NEC2 software. When you first enter for NEC2, as is in the uh, search bar there, there's a number of different options which are, which come up um, to, uh, to to be a potential search result. And there, it, it's actually the top um, search result that we want to, to click onto. There are some other ones, but some of those, uh, whilst they may be the correct software, um, the, the official location is at qsl.net. If we go there, on the right hand side on the downloads you will see that uh, you've got um, two options and it's the top one really which we need to install uh, that has a, an executable which you can then download open up and install from it doesn't have to be installed as would be in the normal path um, so it, it's not going to put itself into one of the program directories most of the time uh, I would install it and in, say uh, the C drive just in its own directory. So when we go um, through, click through to the install process, C colon forward slash four in C2, uh, and then uh, just click through, install a desktop icon is a good idea. And then uh, the software should be installed um, pretty damn quick. So. I'll click off uh, the launch results or the the, uh, the first uh, readme notes and open up the software. So this is what we see as a as a base when it uh, when it opens up. It's got a simple dipole, uh, a fairly simple uh, display, and much smaller than the um, uh, Easy NEC program as far as what it uh, uh, what it depicts in this first opening up. So what I'm going to do now is click the open file and I'm going to go to a desktop um, file that uh, I've saved on here earlier and there's a couple of uh, main differences at this point from what there is with uh, EasyNEC uh, and that is that with this whereas with the EasyNEC you can only open the dedicated .ez antenna files unless you have the pro version of EasyNEC with for NEC2 you can open dot uh, NEC files you can also open uh, output files which are from um, the uh, the outputs of the first run of um, the the files that are produced or the antennas that are produced within for NEC2 you can open up the easy neck files if you have them and also antenna optimizer files as well which is a, an old optimizer which was designed by K6 STI um, and as a DOS based um, antenna optimizer. So for this time and for this particular instance we're going to open up the uh, the um, EasyNEC file and we now have the system open. Now as I've uh, just installed a new version of this I'm going to have overwritten some of my settings that I've had previously set here so bear with me because some of these things may change so here we can close down now uh, the browser and also uh, the, the download. This is the basic interface and we've opened up the antenna that we wanted which is the five element here uh, and that's now um, in the software. I'm just saving because I'd already opened up the package once um, the, um, uh, the files it is created which is a a dot nec file after its first run so if we could just go across the top we've got a help button here um, that will take us off and have a look at any of the help files that we want to look at in here we can also view the uh, the nec menu for the uh, um, the nec code which is opened up onto a separate screen here so this is for the nec2 which is the basic and default uh, calculation engine for this software. One of the advantages with this is it is a free piece of software. You don't, there's no licensing at all. Uh, and it's something which uh, Ari Vores, the author, has, has kindly donated to the community. But unlike with the 
uh, Easy NEC where you would have to buy a, a license for uh, the higher end or the Easy NEC Pro to run the NEC4 uh, software. In this version you can select to use NEC4. You still need to use the or still need to buy I should say the NEC4 license uh, but then I'll show you how that to install that and to put that in for use within the software a little bit later on or in one of the uh, the follow-on uh, examples or tutorials from this so this next button here is uh, very useful again for some um, because it shows you how to produce a matching network in whichever uh, form that you may uh, need to use that as some of you that know me will know, I'm very much against uh, matching uh, networks in Yagi's. There's absolutely no reason to have it anything other than 50 ohm direct feed these days. And where there's any form of matching or trans transformation, uh, then there's going to be loss. There is no method of transforming or matching anything known to science that's 100% efficient. So if you can get rid of that matching device, uh, efficiencies increase so you're not going to have heating uh, at all which means that the power input levels are not going to be reduced and of course one of the other byproducts of course would be noise so we can remove noise from the system which is particularly important once we get UHF and above so the next one is the calculation uh, engine here or the the, the calculation position <clears throat> and you can see because I've changed within the settings window over here I changed to NEC4 it's now going to see show the NEC4 engine it within the calculation now what I'll do before I do that I'm going to go to settings go back to the uh, NEC engine select and select back the standard uh, NEC2 uh, and on this um, LFA Yagi and we can see now it's changed there to NEC2 DX S1K5 that will take up to uh, 1500 segments is what uh, that particular engine will run with. Just before we do anything there, I just want to go to the viewing window. As you can see from my clack or click and drag action on this box, very similar to EasyNeck, whereas I can move the antenna and orientate it where it is. And it has the traditional um, loop here for the uh, LFA Yagi, as you can see. And if you want to zoom in, we can, uh, and then you can uh, shift this uh, down or up or to the side to get it more into uh, display if you want to, and then even uh, drag it out as well so you get a, a much bigger, bigger uh, view of the antenna. So that's all of it in view in a much bigger way. So let's go to the calculation position. I'm going to press generate now and although that was pretty quick because this was a, a rather fast machine um, from the top here you can see that it does actually come up with the NEC2 uh, I can actually make that uh, run a, a little bit longer let me um, do a far field plot and a full uh, and then you can see the data up here you can see it's NEC2 uh, Lawrence Livermore Partnership, Jerry Burke, and EC2D uh, as the software that's being run. So um, that will take a, a few seconds longer before that's finished um, and uh, give us an error message as that was a little bit large. Uh, so I'm going to go back now uh, and take it on to uh, the SWR sweep again rather than doing the overall plot. Um, and we can see here that we've got the pattern that's opened up it's probably better off if we open it up a little bit more uh, and that's a side on view uh, and then in this window over here we have uh, the SWR and return loss one point of note here when you go onto this and look at this SWR here you can see it's around 1.18 to 1 so almost 1.2 to 1 but it's pretty flat just as the first point of interest I'm going to switch this now to NEC4 and uh, do a similar sweep so we can see if there's any difference there. Now look at the difference. When we look at the SWR reported, it, there's virtually no SWR whatsoever. And that's the main difference between um, NEC4 and NEC2. 
when you have this combination of bends and tapers um, in the same element, the accuracy starts to drop off. Uh, and with this, we have um, the uh, the main element sections are half inch, and the loop ends are three eighth inch. So that's uh, to allow for adjustment to that uh, driven element to be able to finalize that uh, that antenna that way. Now this display is really useful. We can change how many of these dots or positions that we have. It's just under every 100 kilohertz at the moment. But if we were to run a sweep uh, and we were change this to 0 0.5 as an example in this field in the steps our start frequency is 144, stop frequency is 145, as this is a, um, a 144 megahertz antenna, which I don't think I, I mentioned earlier on. Um, then when we press generate now, it will take a little bit longer, but you can see we've now got twice as many dots and positions to be able to measure. So in the top window here, frequency, the SWR result, and the return loss, and you can see this is a, a very, uh, very flat, uh, antenna. Now one of the other interesting uh, parameters here is to click on the front to back and gain. Now you have two axes here, there's a green on this side and then the red on this side. This is front to back and this is front to rear. So with front to back it's the difference between this point here where my mouse is here and that point here. Now with front to rear it's the difference between this point here and then from this line, anything behind the antenna. And as you can see, uh, they track fairly much the same. Often the, the green line would be much less than the red because you would have a, a very high front to back right at the back here. Um, this one is a, a very well spaced Yagi, so it doesn't have so much front to back. It ideally needs to be a little bit shorter, but that's something that we'll work on this model in one of the future videos. Uh, and then finally, the next one here is um, impedance and phase. So the phase here, the point of phase change where it crosses this line, that's uh, effectively the point of, of resonance. Um, with wideband jargies like this, they would cross and come above and below that phase change line at various different points. Um, and obviously it's, it's a, a very flat and very wideband antenna, this one. And you can see also that the impedance is very flat all the way across this one as well. It's very close to 50 ohm or just above or just below all the way across its, uh, its range. So very broadband indeed. Uh, the next point on this uh, I think that we'll go to is we can do the individual far field plots. We did a wide band um, or a, a, a full plot last time round. So let's just look in the, the vertical plane in 0.5 degree increments. Uh, this is going to be at 144.3 and we can press generate uh, and then we see our polar plot which is pretty much what we had 11.1 uh, dBi. Uh, if we now click change from the vertical to the horizontal plane and press generate um, we now see a, a very uh, different um, pictorial view of the antenna. This is not one that you're perhaps familiar with uh, the, the, the layout. To, to see the model as we see it within EasyNEC you need the ARRL style um, plot and then that's much more usual pictorial view of the antenna as you would uh, um, be used to seeing it. What I will do is switch back to the um, elevation or, or the vertical plane uh, and then you can see that more um, typical um, view that you would expect to see in EasyNet. Uh, the next on here as we go, um, anything else? If we wanted to change that frequency, we can simply change that by uh, entering or going in and editing. And now that will do that at 144.1, as you can see here. Very little change because we know it's already a wideband uh, antenna. Uh, and again, if we were to go fairly marked change, and go to 145 and press uh, the uh, the go button you can see the pattern changes a little bit but it's not uh, not by a huge amount uh, I'm conscious of the fact that we're getting up to 15 minutes already so we're going to need to cut this one short and we'll go to a, um, a version 2 shortly uh, but what one of the things that I do want to do is show you what the, the 3d plot 
Uh, this is going to be in free space. It's not above ground. We'll do that one in the next one as we drill down a little bit more. Um, and this takes a little bit of a longer run. But on this, you can see now that we're running for um, NEC 4.1 uh, within the software. Um, and this is uh, doing a little bit of number crunching as uh, there's a fair amount of data that needs to be uh, crossed as it's now going in all points in both the um, uh, elevation and azimuth plane. So we can hide or see the structure of the antenna and you can see it's a, a 3D pictorial view of the antenna here. And at the moment this is showing to hide the pattern. So we can show the pattern here as a, a as a solid red, or we can show it in a multicolor view so you can get an idea as to the points of gain. And this perhaps gives a much better indication as to what we're looking at in terms of slices when you're looking at the two dimensional view. Uh, because of course this is where um, the, the driven loop is here. You can see the uh, back ends of the loop that's coming out of the sides here. And if we were to sit over the antenna, not so much out the back, and the main amount of gain is out of the front in this direction. But this plot that we're looking at on the side is from this side on view. That's how we're, um, we're looking at that. And it's a slice from that Z line through the middle. So we're seeing the outline, if you like. Let's bring this around. Um, that's uh, it's about there so that's a, a side on view as to what we're seeing here uh, I don't know if this will switch over yes it does so now we can um, look directly above the antenna and down and you can see this is a pictorial view that we're getting of, of that one here so that's the basic viewing of the antenna um, at the spot frequencies that we run uh, 145 it shows you various important parameters including uh, the impedance and the J figure, um, SWR and radiating efficiency. But it's important to note from this that we haven't uh, got too much in the way of uh, um, networking loss that's within this antenna at the moment either. So I'll cap this one here because we're, we're well over the 15 minutes that YouTube give us for the first, um, first view. Uh, and then in part two, we'll drill down into some of the other functionality on this top toolbar. Thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe.